let's begin by davening that the spirit of our learning should help to bring home the hostages and protect our soldiers, Am Yisrael, all of the innocents, and bring a speedy end to this war. Okay. With that, we will begin. Um, I'll just show you something. We'll come back to this. Let me switch the screen. Started to try to put some things together. The, this is um, a couple of things I got off the time and date website, which we've used before. It's a fantastic website. Um, zoom it out a little bit. So this is a kind of a graphic, on the top we have a kind of a graphic illustration of different degrees of sunset and twilight. Uh, so these are astronomical terms. They're lavdafka, the halachic terms. But there's an, obviously there's going to be an overlap. So what we see in the top chart uh, when you're looking at the horizon, so sunset will be when you no longer see the sun, like visibly see the sun on the horizon. That begins civil twilight until the sun goes down another six degrees. And then that's called civil dusk, and that begins nautical twilight. And then it goes another six degrees. You got nautical dusk and astronomical twilight. And when it's when the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon, then it's night. It's nightfall. So of course they're only giving here the degrees because the the time it takes is going to depend on where you are in the world. But what I did is I copied the times for today in Jerusalem at the bottom here. So civil twilight is gonna begin at 7.23 p.m. Go to 7.49 p.m. Nautical twilight will begin at 7.49 p.m. and go to 8.19 p.m. And then astronomical twilight will begin at 8.19 p.m. and go to 8.51 p.m. So the total amount of time that's lapsed from the beginning of civil twilight until we get to night is going to be from 723 to 851. So that's what, uh, it's an hour and uh, 28 minutes for that whole expanse of time. But the set of Kohavim, the halachic set of Kohavim was about eight and seven. I don't remember. I think eight and se seven minutes or something. So it's much earlier than the night, than the astronomical night. Yeah, but here, wait a second. I can show you that also. I sh I'll show you uh, Alachic Luach Zamanim. Let me share this screen. This is the, uh, this is the Ka Luach. Luach. <laughs> so, yeah, so how did, so what do they have for today? They say Shkia is at 724. Okay, so about the same as the astronomical. And Seita Kochavim is 749, which would coincide more or less with the end of astronomical, uh, I'm sorry, 749 is the end of civil twilight, which is the first, it's when it goes down six degrees. So yeah, 749. So it's from 723 until 749. So it's only what? It's only 25 minutes between those two times. So that's roughly what we see on the chart. That's roughly 
just this first time from sunset to civil dusk. However, um, halachically, so that's that's the most that's like the most widely accepted. But um, one second, I, I, I think the halacha doesn't consider the horizon, but also the the mountains. And... No, no, halacha no, does con no? halacha, yes, halacha, but... halacha does consider all of that. Just a second, I'll not, tell not you. The mountains, the Jerusalem, for instance, you have mountains. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountains, That's yeah. also no. It's also part of it. I'll tell you. Um, I don't have this with me. I'm not sure if it's available online. Uh, years ago, before the age of the internet. I used to buy every year a little booklet that a lot of Gabayim get. Uh, it's the Luach Shnati for, uh, by uh, Rav Takchinsky, who's the person that I mentioned last week. He wrote the book, Beit Nachben Hashmashot. And um, for uh, Ashkenazi communities, uh, people mostly go after his Luach, both in terms of Zmanim and also in terms of Minhag. And uh, so he had, what, this is something I can just tell you, uh, the chush, right? Something that I actually experienced. When we first made Aliyah, we were living in Katamon Aishana, and we had a fourth floor apartment and a, and a balcony. And I used to often, if I couldn't go to shul, I would daven at home. And I, and I tried to always daven vatikin. So I would be out on the porch and I would time for Hanetzah Chabad to start Amida, according to Luach Dokchinsky. And I can tell you that that Luach was exactly, according to that Luach, that's exactly when I saw a sunrise. It was very, it's very entirely mechuvan to being in Jerusalem and seeing the sun come up over the horizon. And of course, it would be different if you're, you know, depending where you are in Jerusalem, some places are actually a little bit higher. There are a lot of places that are much lower than the old city. Uh, and I think maybe we mentioned, you know, there's a controversy in uh, Ramot about, uh, about this. I actually, at, at the time, when we moved to Ramot, so visible Zrichat Chama was about, I don't remember exactly. It was like three to five minutes later than Luach Tokchinsky when I was in Ramad. So I asked uh, Rav Shammai Gross, I said, what should I, like, what should I go by? Because uh, I told him the, the, the minion that I davened at, which was a Vasikin minion, they used a different Luach. I don't remember the name of the Rav who did it. Uh, also very similar, but I can't tell you how he calculated as opposed to how Rav Tukjinsi calculated. Um, and I asked, so they used his, which was, which actually uh, also visible, even according to the uh, this other calendar, visible sunrise was a few minutes later than when they would have an Amida. So what I used to do in the beginning, I would just I would walk outside before Amida, and I would wait until I could see the sun before I started davening. But at some point, I asked uh, Rav Shammai what I should do, and uh, now I, I it's a long time ago. I think he said I should just daven with the minion, but uh, yeah, even in and around Jerusalem, you can get it would be a few minutes difference in terms of what we're concerned about uh about the end of the day so here i'll just give you for today in jerusalem um say to kochavim i have a diff i have an app called um uh, i don't remember what it's called nice money it's an app, for, it's called Hebdate, H-E-B-D-A-T-E. -E. It's in Hebrew, but the name is Hebdate or Hebdate. So they give four different zmanim for Tzaytakochavim, depending on the shita. 
So the earliest is 751 and 20 seconds. And then the second one is 801 and 42 seconds. The third is 835 and 24 seconds. And the latest Seta Kochavim is 841, 15 seconds. So these different shitot have to do have to do with what we're studying now, the different shitot halachically about how you determine uh Seta Kochavim and what what we what we see is that the machloket here is really about when exactly do we consider ben hashmashot? So what we're going to do uh, for the moment is we're going to go back and look at uh, the Aruch HaShulchan. We'll review a little bit of what we did last week and then we'll move on. We'll just do a little bit of what we did last week to remind us of what he said. Um Probably we should go through all of it again to remind us, but it's okay. Um, again, as, as he's going to lay out, the the problem the problem that we have is there is a um, we have this Gemara in the Sechet Shabbat, which we looked at a while ago. And um, there, what it sounds like is uh, we have a couple. We have a couple of different uh, sources from this from this uh, Gemara in Shabbat. Yeah, this is it. Let's just look at the Brita again. Uh, we have a Brita here, and we have a couple of other sources, and then we have a different Brita, which we didn't look at in Masachat Pesachim. And here it says, Tanu Rabbanan, Ben Hashmashot, Safek Min Hayom U Min Halayla, Safek Kulo Min Hayom, Safek Kulo Min Halayla, that is, these are the, the three sfekot that are, we have about the halachic status of Ben Hashmashot. What, in other words, it's a suffix, whether it's still entirely the day, meaning the day, right, the day before, as it were. Suffix that it's the night, that the night has already begun with Ben Hashmashot. And there's a suffix that, um, that it may be from both. Right, suffix mina yomim u min halayla. There's a suffix that maybe it's both partly day and partly night. So we have three sekot. So the Brayta says mitilino to lechomer shnei yamim. So we give it the chumra. We we conduct ourselves halachically at the to to give it the chomer of both days. That is. If 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 the if we're looking at Ben Hashmashot on Erev Shabbat, so it it means that we should consider it already Shabbat. If we're looking at the end of Shabbat, we could st we should consider it still Shabbat, even though that contradicts, presumably, right? So let's say let's give it time. So let's say the Ben let's say the time that we're talking about. So it hasn't defined Ben Hashmashot yet. It's just telling us that when we come to Ben Hashmashot, we have these halachic sfekot. So let's say, for the purpose of this discussion, let's say Ben Hashmashot begins at 7 and ends at uh, 7.30. So it means that for that half hour, I don't know if it's yet, if it's, if it's on Erev Shabbat, I don't know, it might still be Friday. It might be in other words, it's entirely Friday. It's entirely Erev Shabbat. It might be entirely Shabbat, or it might be that it's partly Shabbat and partly not Shabbat. 
so then what do I say at the end of the day? In other words, on Shabbat, as I'm going out of Shabbat, I come to that time of day from 7 to 7.30 the next day. All right, slightly different day, but let's say within a minute or so. So 7 to 7.30. So again, I have the same Svekot. I don't know if it's still Shabbat. I don't know if it's now completely Motzei Shabbat or it's a safek that may be part of its Shabbat and part of its Motzei Shabbat. So So for halachic purposes, I give it the Chumras of both days. So that means on Erev Shabbat, I'll consider it halachically to be Shabbat. And if it's on Shabbat, I'll consider it also to be Shabbat. Right, even though in it, you could say that's a stira, right? Because either it has to be one or the other. But since I don't know, a machmir gam lehen or lehen, right? So then it says the ezehu bein hashmashot. So what is bein hashmashot? So it says misha tishka hachama from the time the sun goes down, which presumably means from the time that you can no longer see the sun on the horizon. As long as the as the face of the east is red, it right. It, it, it's, uh, I guess I see it more as an orangish, but they would also call that red, right? But in, and uh, the Gemara will explain this a little bit further in a minute. So as you're looking at the horizon, the bottom of the, at the bottom of the horizon, after a few minutes, it gets dark, but you can still see light higher up in the sky. That's Ben Hashmashot. If both the bottom of the horizon and the top of the horizon, so the entire horizon now, is dark, that's night. So, of course, the Gemara, we saw this, the Gemara understands there's a, there's a seeming contradiction here, because a minute ago I said, Ben Hashmashot is from the time that the sun goes down, and then right after it says, It's giving two definitions for Ben Hashmashot. So the Gemara will explain that in a minute, but that's the words of Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Nachem Yomer, Ben Hashmashot, I'm sorry, Rabbi Nachem Yomer, Kedei Shihalei Chadam, Misha Tishka HaChama, Hatsi Mil. It's the time it takes a person, meaning like an average person walking, walking on an average day, to walk a half of a meal. So a meal is uh, 2,000 amot. It's the time it takes to walk 1,000 amot from the time you no longer see the sun on the horizon. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Ben Hashmashot Keherafayim, Zech Zenich Nas Vizei Yotzei V'yef Shalom Odala. Right, so, Ben Hashmashot is like the blink of an eye. And this goes out, in other words, the first day goes out, and Nukh day comes in, and one cannot determine this in any precise manner. Amar Mar. So now the Gemara examines the bright. It says, "Mitilina tolochem chomer shnei yamim l'may hilchata." What does it mean that because of this safek ben ashmashot, we give you the chumra of, of two days? What's that? How does that translate practically? Amar Avuna berei the Rav Yeshua inyan tuma. So it has to do with inyan tuma, and we skipped this part. But this is for a zav who has to count. Uh, days, consecutive days, we have to consider if this, if they, let's say they see Ben Hashmashot on day one and Ben Hashmashot on day two, um, how do we count the days? So I'm, I'm going to leave that for the moment. But then we get to this part, Ha Gufa Kasha, but the Brita is itself difficult. In other words, there's an internal contradiction within the Brita. Is because we a Marta because you said in the bright days of Ben Hashmashot, Misha Tishka Achama calls the man Shepene Mizrach Maadimi. So as far as we know, that's Ben Hashmashot. But 
so what would that imply? So then I would say that the next uh, marker, which is when the bottom of the horizon gets dark, while the top of the horizon is still light, I would assume that would be night, because that would be the next time. That would be the next uh, visual marker. But Hadartana, but then right after that I learned Benashmashot. The brightest says, no, that time is Benashmashot. So how can both the first time be Benashmashot and the second time be Benashmashot? So Amar Baravyu, Amar Rabba, Amar Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Kroch Vitani. Literally, bind them together and learn them. Or it's learn them as if it's one uh, kata, one piece. Ezehu ben ashmashot. When is ben ashmashot? Misha tishka achama, kol zaman shepenei mizrach ra'adimin. Vihichsif ha-tachton velo hichsif ha-elyon nami ben ashmashot. It's saying that both of those times comprise ben ashmashot. From the time the sun goes down, as long from, basically what it means if you put it together, it's from the time the sun goes down until the bottom of the horizon is dark. That's all really one time, even though you can see the change, but it's all one time. That's uh, that's how uh, uh, Shmuel holds. Rav Yosef, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. Rav Yosef says in the name of we have a, at some machlokas between Rav and Rav Yosef about what the Kabbalah is from Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel. He says, "Hachik tani mishat tishka chama kol zman shepnei mizrach ba'adimi." Yo, he says, actually no. That first part from the time the sun goes down and all the time that the horizon is still reddish. That's still daytime. That's Ben Ashmashot. That's night. Okay, and this goes on. Uh, well, actually, we'll do a little bit more. So they go each, so Rab and Rav Yosef each go according to a shita that they already have, the Itmar, because it's we have a Ma'amar. On this topic, shiur ben ashmashot vikama. What's the sh- what is how long is ben ashmashot? What's the shiur ben ashmashot? Amar Amar Raba Amar Avihud Amar Shmuel Shosha Chelkei Meal. It's three quarters of a meal. So what's that? That's fifteen hundred amot. My Shosha Chelkei Meal. So what is it? Il Ilema Tlata Palge Mila Nema Mil Mechza. So what do you mean three parts of a meal? If you say it means uh, three portions of a meal, so just say meal vechet, meal mecht, just say a meal and a half. Why do you say three parts? Ela plata tilte mila. So maybe, maybe what it means is it's three quarters of a meal. Name a meal. I'm saying, two thirds of a meal. So say a meal. Right. In any event, the conclusion is that what it means is three quarters of a meal. Rav Yosef and Rav Yehuda Mar Shmuel Shnei Chelkei Meal. It's two parts of a meal. My Shnei Chelkei Meal. So what does that mean? Two parts of a meal. Ilema. Tre palge mila lema meal. If you say it means two halves of a meal, just say a meal. Ela vela tre riva e mila. If you say it's two quarters of a meal, lema chatsi meal. So just say half of a uh, right. Just say half of a meal. What's the what does it mean? Two portions. Tre tilte meal. Uh, so it means actually tre tilte meal. It's two thirds of a meal. My benai who. So what's the difference now between Rabba and Rav Yosef in terms of this length of time? palga de danka. That you, what you, the difference between them is a half of a sixth. So how does that work out? So, uh, So 
So what did we conclude? We concluded, according to Rabba, the conclusion is three quarters of a meal. So it's, it's the time it takes to walk 1,500 amot. And according to Rav Yosef, we're going to say it's two-thirds of a meal. So it would be two-thirds of 2,000. Right? So that would be a little bit more. So the, the Gemara says that you have between them is a half of a sixth. In other words, one-twelfth. Rashi explains, Palga de Danka. Echad It's half of a sixth, meaning it's one twelfth of a meal. It's the difference. Rabba holds three quarters of a meal. That's nine half sixth uh, sixths, and. The shur of Rabbi Yosef is eight half of a sixth. So there's a very slight difference between them. Uh, so, so it's like this: if you, um, you should palge danka. If you, if we. If you look at the, if you look at a, at the, if you look at the meal, as being twelve whole parts, so then three quarters would be nine whole parts, and. Uh, so that would, and that's the shita of Rabba. Rav Yosef says it's two thirds. So two thirds would be eight, eight whole parts. So that's the difference between them is a half of a, it's a half of that sixth. In any event, I won't test you on the math. I, I'm sorry, I was going to actually write that out as a formula, but it's it's a basic. It's just there. It's it's using a base twelve, essentially, to figure it out so that you can make you know so it's easier to compare the uh, the totals. Um, that's the first Gemara in Shabbat, and then later in the Gemara in Shabbat. Uh, it discusses it a little bit more, and it says, let's say, I want to show you a couple of things. So Abaye looked at Rava, who was gazing at the West, meaning it was the end of the day, and Abaye was looking at Rava as Rava was trying, was, he understood that Rava was trying to figure out where they were, what time it was vis-a-vis Ben Ashmashot. And so he sees him looking toward the West. So he doesn't understand why is he looking toward the West. Amarle, he's said to Rava, Bahatanya, we learned in the Brighter, the Brighter that you and I just learned. It's all the time. When is Benesh Mashot? It's from the time the sun goes down. And as long as the face of the east is reddish. So, Do you think that it means the actual face of the east? In other words, that I should be looking at the east. Lo, what it means is Hanim hamadimin et hamizrach. It's the face that makes the east reddish. That is, it's the reflection you would get from the west to the east. So in order to see it, you have to look west. That's how he understands. And that's, that's the accepted understanding. 
Abaye's and uh, Rava's understanding is the way we understand. Ikadamri Rava Chazi Abaye. Some people say that Rava was looking at Abaye the Kad Dave Lo Mizrach Amarle Misavart Pene Mizrach Mamash Benim Hamidimi Nat Mizrach Besimanech Tavta. So the other way around is that maybe it was Abaye either was Abaye looking at Rava or is Rava looking at Abaye, but they come to the same conclusion. And it says the siman, your siman is kavta. Kavta is a window or windows. It's like the light you would see, as it were, coming through a window, through the window. Uh, Rashi says Davi, right? So um, he, uh, Rava saw by Davi, Mabit. He was like looking at er, on Erev Shabbat to see if there was still reddishness in the sun. And he says it's, and he explains to explain uh, uh, explains to Abaye, it's Padnim Hamadimim at the Mizrach le'erev Hamad. In the evening, the sun goes down in the west. The rays of the sun redden the east like a window, the way, I guess, light comes through a window. When the sun gets into that position, ma'ademet Kotel shikanegda. It would make if you're looking at, let's say, a white wall or a light-colored wall opposite the horizon. It would look reddish. That would be the light that it gives off. V'simanech kavta chalon k'mosha birashti. It's like the light, uh, as it were, that's reflected through. Okay, so that's the next part. And then Rabbi Nechemia, so now we're going back to discuss Rabbi Nechemia, his shita in the Brayta. And he says, It's It's the time it takes to walk a half of a meal. Amar Rabbi Chanina, Harotzel Eida Shirosho Rabbi Nechemia. So Rabbi Chanina says, Anyone who wants to know the shear, the time that Rabbi Nechemi is talking about, Carmel, he can leave the sun when he's at the top of the Carmel, right? So you know, like if you're in Haifa and you're on Har Carmel, you get to the end of Har Carmel, and when you see the sun setting, then from that time, the time it would take you to go down Tavel in the sea, and then come back. So he gave a very practical shiur, right? You could go and you could test it out yourself. And this is something else, which is, but I'm going to skip it. Um, then, Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Ben Hashmashot, Rabbi Yehuda, Kohanim Tovlin Bo. Okay, actually, so this goes back to the first mission in Brachot. When did the Kohanim go to eat their Chuma? Right? Was, we say Kriyat Shema at the time the Kohanim go to eat their Chuma. Right? So when, so he says, Ben Hashmashot of Rabbi Yehuda, that's the time the Kohanim go to Tavl. I'm going to leave this part because it, it, it's interesting, but I don't want to get too much into the weeds here. What I want to do is go back now to... Uh, these are the main things that we get from the Gemara in in Shabbat. So what we see back in the Aruch HaShulchan, he says, Amnam be'etzim zman ve'en ashmashod yesh machloket ben aposkim. So this zman of ve'en ashmashod is a machloket poskim. The kfiyam of war me'agmara Avizman ve'nashmashot, meshach hiluch gimel reva'e mil, 
It's the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal, a charashkiya, right? That was the shita of Rabba, and that's how we hold. Um, uh, so from the time the sun goes down, the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal, and then at the end of that time, it's night. So now he gives, you know, more concrete, uh, or at least more modern uh, definitions, he says, So we determine that this length of time, hiluch mil, is 18 parts of a 60-minute hour. So it's 18 minutes. So one meal is 18 minutes. So three quarters of a meal is going to be 13 and a half minutes. So according to this shita, from the time the sun goes down, for the next 13 and a half minutes, it's bena shmashot, and then halachically, it's nighttime. Now, as we saw at the chart that I showed you at the beginning, that's still, certainly in Jerusalem, it's still going to be within that first uh, level of twilight. But for uh, there's this is the shita that what for halachic purposes it's already nighttime at the end of that thirteen and a half minutes. Odam uh, the Gemara they further said in the Gemara so this is a little bit later it was a little bit further down the daf. Uh, they also said kochav echad yom shnayim bein hashmashot shosha leil. Right, so this is the definition of the Gemara later on. It gives another siman for Ben Hashmashot. So when you see one star, it's daytime. If you see two stars, it's Ben Hashmashot. If you see three stars, it's night. And what kind of stars are we talking about? Not big ones that are so bright that you can see them in the day, and not small ones that you can only see, you know, in the when it's absolute night, but medium ones. <laughs> so Zelashan and so now the Rambam Paskins, presumably based on these sources, he says, uh uh Ilchot Shabbat, he says, Din uh uh Din Dalit, Misha from the time the sun goes down, so you see three medium-sized stars. Who has man? Hanikra ben Hashmashot. This is every place we talk about ben Hashmashot. That's the definition. From the time the sun goes down until you see three medium stars. Who safek min hayov? And we're machmir to consider it, you know, either on Erev Shabbat as Shabbat and on Motzei Shabbat as Shabbat and so forth. The kochavim elo log dolim log tanim, etc. So he asked. We did this last week, but maybe I don't know. Maybe it'll sink in a little bit more now. But paravi na muvanim. So now we don't really understand the Rambam. What's the problem with the Rambam? So what did we say? We gave two mark. We gave two sort of markers for ben hashmashot. So one of them is mishetishka uh, hama, the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal. That's thirteen and a half minutes. And then we we also have the other brayta that says once if you see one star, it's day. It, uh, in other words, if after Shkiyat HaChama, if you see one star, it's day. If you see two stars, it's Menash Mashot. And if you see three stars, it's night. But what did the Rambam say? He says, from the time that the sun goes down until you see three stars, that's Menash Mashot. So you see the problem? Is it, is it because Bein Hashemot doesn't start until, according to the earlier opinion, until there's two stars? 
It doesn't, right. So here we have Misha Tishka Hamad, Shiro Gimel Kochavim Binoniim, Uzman and Ikra Ben That's what the Rambam says. But the Brighta said, Kochav Echad Yom, that's in other words, from the time of Shkiata Hamad, Kochav Echad Yom, Shnaim Ben Ashmashot, Shlosha Laila. So the Rambam says, from the time the sun goes down until you see three three medium stars. That whole time is Ben Ashmashot. According to the Brita, it doesn't begin Ben Ashmashot until you see two stars. So we have to understand the Rambam. It says, Share Big Maram the Kochav Echad Yom. Gemara said, one Kochav is still day at, from the time of Shkiyah. Kozman, that you just see one star, it's still day. Well, Korchach, they know Mina Kochavim and Nirim Bayom. And obviously, that star that you would see during that time that the Bright is talking about, that's not one of the stars that you would have seen during the day. How do I know? Sharei Mefarei Shacharkach, as the Bright itself said, Velo Kochavim Gedolim and Nirim Bayom. The stars that we're talking about are not stars that you see during the day. That you see during the day when when it's when it's clearly day before shkiat al-chaman ba'korchach the benoni imkai when you read macharei shkia all of the stars it's talking about must be these medium stars that we're seeing after shkia but dain yomhu and so when you see the first one according to the brayta it's still daytime but the rambam says ech pasak shemiyash mish how could the Rambam Paskin that Shkia, that Shkia begins Ben Ashmashot? He should have said like the Brighter that Shkia begins when you see two stars after Shkia. So people already asked this question. But oh, furthermore, why did he leave out this Shiur of the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal. Vein Lamar de Pligi. You can't say that the two those two sources in the Gomorrah argue with one another. Rather you have to say they complement one another. Why? Because the Rif brings both of them. And he does and if the Rif brings both of them, it means unless he would comment otherwise, it means that he sees them as being the same thing, that they complement each other. So I understand that they don't argue with one another. So he so he answers for the Rambam. Why does the Rambam say Ben Ashmashot begins at Shkia and not after two stars? And basically, I'm not going to read it word by word. We saw it last week. Basically says that maybe the Rambam is just worried that for an average person who's not going to be so expert in determining the stars, it's just easier to tell them from the time of Shkia until it's nightfall, that's Ben Ashmashot. And that's why he does it. Uh, and it, of course, it has implications for other halachot, but uh, we'll leave it at that. So then he says, shitata ramba. So, okay. so now we have the Shita of the Rambam. So according to the Shita of the Rambam, Immediately after Shkia is when Ben Ashmashot starts. Okay. That's also the way the Rif and the Gaonim before him held. They gave another Shita. Uh, they agreed with Rabbeinu Tam on his shita, which we will explain in a moment, because why? What was Rabbeinu Tam's problem? The kashalhu was problem for all of these Rabbeinu Tam de Siato, all the people who went with him. What was the problem? Kashalhu Rabbeinu Eilen, the Echa Shalomar Shemi Hishkiya Hachama, Nishi how can you say 
from the time that the sun goes down until the night is this is 13 and a half minutes. It's this time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal. Because I have a different brightza in Psachi, where we say, gives a completely different shiur. It says the time it takes from the time the sun goes down until nightfall takes the time the time it takes to walk for a meal. How long would that be? I lost Michael and Paul. So it's up to you. Uh, um, okay, can you run the question again, Hal? <laughs> I can give you the question again, but since you weren't uh, awake, you're not going to be able to answer it properly. Michael Schwartz. Uh, uh, was it 18 minutes? So each meal is 18 minutes. So how long does it take to walk oh, four sorry, meals? Four, four times, like it's 40 times 18, which is uh, 68, right? No. No. 64. No, four times 18 people. How much it's is seven, it? Uh, seven, it's, six, no. 72. That was my next 40 <laughs> This is what happens in the days of automatic calculators. We forget our times table. Yeah, I, I used to be able to do all these things in my head. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, so according to the Rambam, how long is Banish Mashot? He was the first shita. Did he didn't give it a number? He just said until three stars. He said until three stars. So, uh, what we filled in though, because the riff fills it in, we say that it's it's also the it, it it's the same amount of time as it takes to walk three quarters of the meal, which is thirteen and a half minutes. So even though that's not Mufurash in the Rambam, and it could be actually the Rambam is a little bit longer, but for the purposes of the, these shita, we're going to say that the first shita is that from the si time the sun goes down until the end of 13 and a half minutes is Benash Mashot, and then it's nightfall. But now I have a Brita that says from the time of Shkia for 72 minutes it's Benash Mashot, and then it's nightfall. So that's a that's a big difference, right? It's more than four times as much. So how do we reconcile these? How do we reconcile the these uh, these different sources? So you see, based on this Gemara in Psachim, based on this Bryce in Psachim, that says that this time the time it takes for Benash Mashot that Benash Mashot goes on for seventy two minutes. That the shkia, there's really two shkiot. There's a shkia that's being spoken about in Psachim and a shkia that's being spoken about in Shabbat. Right? Shnei shkiotein. Ha'chat, hat'chalat ha'shkia. One is the beginning of shkia. U'mimena yesh arba milin ad layla. From the beginning of shkia, you count 72 minutes, and then it's nightfall. Uveshabbat mayrinan, vishkia hashmiya, and in Shabbat, in other words, in the Gemara in Shabbat, where it says that shkia comes when you see two medium sized stars, or the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal. That's hainu shikbar hachama mishukad verakia. That's talking about when the sun has already sunk from the sky, but it hasn't completely gone from behind the horizon. And so this is, uh, and, and, and so that amount of time is going to be longer, uh, it's going to be shorter. It's a shorter amount of time, but it's later. So, if you understand what I mean, one second. That's also one of the reasons I brought the illustration, which I'll come back to in a second. The siman for this shkia is for the time that the rakia, right, that the 
what you see in the distance on the horizon is um, is, is still orangish. So, therefore, according to this shita of Rabbeinu Tam, from the time of, of the beginning of Shkia, which is from the time you no longer see the sun on the horizon, for the time it takes to walk three and a quarter meal, that's still daytime. The Hulu Tosefet Shabbat. But that's the time that you have for adding on to Shabbat, which comes back to the whole way we got into this topic about Tosefet Shabbat. So Rabbeinu Tam and all these other post game hold like this idea that you have to have Tosefet for Shabbat. So they say this time, from the time you see the sun go down for the next, so now what's the calculation? Three and a quarter meal will be how much time? So three meal is three times 18. Um, uh, uh, 54. And a quarter of a meal is a quarter of 18 is four and a half. So it's 58 and a half minutes. So for from the time the sun goes down on the horizon, for the next 58 and a half minutes, that time is Ben uh, That's not, I'm sorry, that's, so that's, uh, yeah, that's the beginning of Ben um, And during that time, uh, uh, So, until you get to nightfall per se, according to the Shita, you have to count 72 minutes from the time of Shkia, but the first 58 and a half minutes is the time that you can use to add, it's still technically day, it's the time you can use to add on to your Shabbat. And then the last 13 and a half minutes, that's Benesh Mashot per se. And then you have to, in that time, that's the, that's the second Shkia, as according to uh, Rabbeinu Tam. And that time, it's already considered to be uh, Safek Yom, Safek Laila. Uh, so here, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. <laughs> so according to the Shitab Rabbeinu Tam, from the time the sun goes down, for the next 58 and a half minutes, technically it's still daytime. Tosefet <laughs> Shabbat. That's the time you can, you can start Shabbat during that time, and then you'll be adding on to the uh, from Chol to Kodesh of Shabbat. Umiyaz <laughs> Madchil Ben Hashmashot. Uh, and that's and and from from uh the Gimel Vay Mila Kharkach of Yulaya. So that and it, once you get to the end of the fifty eight and a half minutes, you get to the last thirteen and a half minutes, um then you that's no longer Tosefet Shabbat, that's Safek Yob, Safek Laila, etc. And so that's not considered to be the Tosefet. And then after that it's Vadai Laila. That's the shita of Rabbeinu Tam. So we have the first shita of the Rif and the Gonim and essentially the Rambam, that from the time that the sun goes down for the next 13 and a half minutes is, is Banish Mashot, and then after that it's night. And according to Rabbeinu Tam, from the time of Shkiyat Chama for the next 58 and a half minutes, it's still daytime. But you can start Shabbat then to be in order to be Mosi Chol Kodesh. Once you get to the end of the fifty-eight and a half minutes, the last thirteen and a half minutes, it's Safek Yom Safek Laila, and so Midi right to Mishum Safek, you consider it to be Shabbat, and then at the end of seventy-two minutes, it's going to be completely nighttime.
those are those two shita. There's a third shita. And before we go to the third shita, let's go back for a minute and look at... Let's look at this again now, right? So now we sure, see... Sure. Yes. What is the shita we have on the usual luchot? Uh, this is the... Uh, the stam, you see the... The stam the shita and the luchot is the first shita. And then there are luchot that will tell you shita to tam. Like I say, like I gave you which, in the Hebrew which cow. Is, which is later, yes. I, I have a son who is doing the Avdalah Lafir Rabbi Nutan. Yes. Right. We, so we, we have to wait some more time and, until we, before we, right. uh, we, we call him up. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. So if you're Machmir, so at the end of Shabbat, it's your Machmir to end Shabbat much later because you're counting 72 minutes from Shkiat Hama. Whereas we'll count a much lower, you know, a much shorter amount of time from Shkiyat uh, of 13 and a half minutes until the end of the day. And then add, then we'll add like a, maybe a few extra minutes through the Tosefet. But Shittat uh, Rebbein then is more Machmir at the end of Shabbat. In theory, it's more Kal at the beginning of Shabbat, but we'll come back to that. So now we see this this at this time so now we'll see again so from the time of sunset during this time of civil twilight the sunset is when you no longer see the sun on the horizon so it's darker out but it's not dark yet so it's called civil twilight calls the mind that the sun is going down until it goes down six degrees below the horizon so, in, like I say, in Jerusalem today, that amount of time is going to be 26 minutes. So it's not even the 13 and a half minutes that we would get from the reef. But if we add uh, 72 minutes to the 723 time, so then it would be, what, uh, 823, 835, that's somewhere in this latter part here of astronomical twilight. In other words, it's much darker. It'll be much darker. So that, so you see, the, the, these shito don't line up with the definitions that are used in astronomy, but the definitions used in modern astronomy are based on calculations of where the sun's position is vis-a-vis -vis the Earth, per se, and According to Chazal, it would be a calculation that's really based on human observation. It's These things are based solely on human observation. I'm not saying that astronomy is in human observation, but it's a, more, it's a more sophisticated thing. Any average person looking at the horizon uh, and who can walk can make these calculations by themselves. Right, you don't need a you don't need any fancy uh, mathematics or equipment or anything, but it's just interesting to to see. And I didn't look at this again, but I told you if you're interested, if you look at the Wikipedia article with the title Ben Hashmashot, they discuss the differences between astronomical and halachic times. And it, it I didn't go through the whole article, but it, it's very interesting. All right, but this is what we're up to right now. But now we're going to introduce a third shita, which we didn't see last week, I don't believe. Uh, and this shita is a shita that uh, is not at all common anymore. The shita la rishonim. There are some rishonim. The Ravan and Rabbi Yazari meets in the Yereim. The Rabbi Yazari wrote a sefer called the Sefer Yereim. So in other words, they also had to deal with this question that we have, on the one hand, we have the shiur of Shoshet Revei Mil in Shabbat. And in, in Pesachim, we have the shiur of Dalet Milin from Shkiat Hama. Right? So how do I deal, how do I reconcile those two sources? So we saw how Rabbeinu, we saw how Rabbeinu Tam answers that. 
So now we'll say, how did these post game answer that? Um, rule they say like this, they push it the uh, in the other direction. That is the shiur gimel riva a meal shall benish mashot. The shear of three quarters of a meal that the Gemara and Shabbat says is benish mashot. Hein kodem hashkia. That's the time before shkiat lachama. It's the time when you can still see the sun on the horizon. Ba'od hachama al ha'aretz, right? While the sun is still on the land. Udeya zu, according to this opinion, so now what they're doing is they're pushing the beginning of the day earlier. Udeya zu, gam kodem hashkia havi safek laila. So that is, remember, ben hashmashot, the first brayta that we saw at Shabbat, it says, Ben Hashmashot is Safek Yom Safek Laila. So if I say Ben Hashmashot begins, it begins 13 and a half minutes before Shkiyat HaChama, that means from that time it's already Safek Yom, and I can no longer do any Malacha. So, uh, according to them, according to this, you already have to stop doing malacha and light your candles a long time before actual shkia. In other words, so what do they do? They say, they also have to understand that there's going to be four milin somehow altogether, 72 minutes. But they say, we're going to count the first part while the sun is still out. And then when from Shkia, I'm going to add on the uh, three and a half meal, the 58 and a half minutes. So I have 13 and a half minutes before and 15 and a half minutes afterwards. And that will be the four milin. So according to this, you have to start Shabbat a lot earlier than we're used to starting it, right? Um, she, she, yeah. The Tosefet in Jerusalem, about yeah. the quarter of an hour, has it got something to do with all this Shittot, or is, has it a complete different comes from, from some... Uh, so, uh, you know what? A different I, argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. It's a related thing. It. I know. It's the. It, this was the minhag of the Talmidei Hagra to light candles, uh, forty minutes before, uh, before Shkia. Um. But I'm not. I. I'll, I have to say, I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to go back and look at that, and I don't have an answer for you now. Believe that I don't have an answer for you next time. Because I know that the Gra actually doesn't accept this particular shita. The Gra rejects this shita. He's going to tell us in a minute. But we have, okay, but this is the third shita that we start the day while the sun, we start the next day while the sun is still out. So uh, it says, This opinion was not accepted. It wasn't what put in wide acceptance. He says in brackets, Bach says really that you should be right, you should try to keep according to this if you can. He says, really, in earlier generations, you The Bach says that in earlier generations, people would start Shabbat even two hours before the night. Not before Shkia, but before the night. Right, and happy is their lot. And I looked there, and it, 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 he, he brings it there as like it's a nice thing to do if you can start Shabbat very early. So these are the three shittot. Okay, so now, in the Shulchan Aruch, he only brings the Shita of Rabbeinu Tam, Utfasoli Ikar. He holds this to be the the main Shita to hold by. This is the Lashon of the Shulchan Aruch. 
יש אומרים שצריך להוסיף מכל על הקודש, right? And again, remember, he said, why did he say יש אומרים? And he doesn't just say that you have to add מכל על קודש. Why did he say יש אומרים? From Shir from two weeks ago. <laughs> Michael Schwartz, you you look like you know, but you don't want to I, say. I, I did, I did know, and I forgot. I remember because it was something new to me. So I, but I don't remember. The chidush was that was. I think it even goes back three weeks. We repeated it a couple of times. The chidush was right. We looked in our sugya, right? We're still in our sugya back in Yoma, and what we said is one, one of the sort of uh, side things that we got from our sugya was this whole question of whether or not there's such a thing as Tosefet. And what we saw is the Rift holds explicitly that there's Tosefet for Yom Kippur, for Inui, and for Malacha, and for all the other Yamim Tovim for Malacha. But then we looked at the Rambam, and the Rambam only mentions the idea of Tosefet for Yom Kippur and only for Inui. And so we, we noted that at the time, that the Rambam has a shita, and the Rambam and also the Tur, they hold that this idea of Tosefet only applies to Yom Kippur and for Inui on Yom Kippur. So when the Beit Yosef says, Yesh Omim Shetzarich Losif Mechol HaKodesh, and he's talking about Shabbat, he says Yesh Omrim, even though it's most post scheme, but it but not the Rambam and not the Tur. That's why he says Yeshom. All right, so he says Yeshom shall see Shitzrich will see Pechol Kodesh. It's one Tosefet Zeh. So how long is this Tosefet? That we, how much do we have to add on from Chol to Shabbat? He mitchilat Hashkia. It's from the time of the beginning of Shkia. And when is that? Shein Hashem Shnirat Al Haaret. He, defined, he makes it clear. Shkia is the time you no longer see the sun on the on the ground. Adzman ben hashmashot until the time of ben hashmashot. So clearly, according to this shita, ben hashmashot does not begin at shkia. There's some amount of time between shkia and ben hashmashot. Vazman azeh, and he tells you how long it is. Shuhu gimel milin urvia. It's the time it takes to walk three and a quarter meal, which we have pegged at 58 and a half minutes. So that whole amount of time, Ratsala Soto Kulo Tosefet Ose. If you want to, in other words, if you want to start Shabbat already from Shkiat the Chama, that's fine. You can start Shabbat from Shkiat. But if you want to start Shabbat later during that time, that's also okay. As long as you add some amount of time when it's still full on to Kodesh, that you start Shabbat before it's absolute. Shabbat. So that would be, so from the time of Shkia, for the next 58 and a half minutes, anytime you want to start Shabbat, you can start, but you have to start it sometime during that period of time in order to be Mosif Chol Al Kodesh. And then you come to Ben Hashmashot. That's the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal. Shem alach elef taf kuf amot. That's the time it takes to walk at uh, 1500 amot. Kodem halayla, before the night. Ad kan l'shono. V'zeh shitat rebeinu tam. Right, so we see, that's the Shulchan Aruch, and he's giving us shitat rebeinu tam. Um, he has this interesting comment in brackets, which I'm going to skip. Uh, and then, Siv Chet, Hinei rabim migdolei olam dachu shitat rabbeinu tam mikol Among the great 
of people of the world, right? And there's a great post scheme. Many of them rejected the Rashid of Rabbeinu Tam. And he puts them in parentheses. Who, were, who is he referring to specifically? The Gra and the Graz. The Graz was uh, Gaon Rebbe Zalman. That's the Alter Rebbe. So, and if you know any history, you know that the Gra was the outstanding, you know, misnagid of his of his day, and the Graz, the Alter Rebbe, was you know was was his opposite force, as it were, in the Hasidic world. Um, so just to add in, and you may know this, but I'll just add in. So you know the uh, the Alter Rebbe, who was, a, and I I believe this is correct. I'm not an expert in this. I think he was Talmud of the Magid Mezrich, and um, and he was a phenomenal Talmud Chacham. He was really an outstanding Talmud Chacham, and I believe the story goes that he was asked by his Rebbe, the Magid Mezrich to write a purely halachic treatise, uh, in part, I think, to show the Misnagdim that they knew how to learn. And uh, that became the Shulchan Aruch, what we call the Shulchan Aruch HaRav, or Shulchan Aruch HaRav HaZaken, the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. And uh, it's, it's a great work. He didn't do it on all of the Shulchan Aruch, we have it on all of the Orach Chayim and then parts of the other parts of the Shulchan Aruch. But the vast majority is, is on the, uh, the Orach Chayim. So maybe next time I'll, I'll show you how he brings it down there. But in any event, despite their uh, philosophical differences, they agreed, there are many times they agreed in things in Halakha. And this is one of them, that both the Gra and the Alter Rebbe rejected the sheet of Rabbeinu Tam. And what did they hold? Hechitu dimiyad achar hashkia havi ben hashmashot. V'yachar gimu revei mi'il havi laila. They hold like this. Shkia, once you come to shkia on any given day, that's already ben hashmashot. And after Gimel Reveimil, if you add on, uh, after Gimel, after you walk, uh, the time it takes to walk three quarters of a meal, then it's nighttime. So basically, from Shkia plus 13 and a half minutes, it's nightfall. So, what about the Gemara and Psachim? Zeshab Psachim, Eno Yitziyata Kochavim Shebacholad. That's not when we're talking about in Psachim that there's four meal until the nightfall. That's not when the stars come out. Shabbos Shas Gimel Kochavim. Shabbos Shas Gimel Kochavim. All throughout Shas, this idea of nightfall, Ziyat Kochavim, is when you see three Kochavim. But the nightfall that you would get based on the Gemara in Psachim, El Shetit Male Kol Harakia BeKochavim. It, nightfall, absolute nightfall, as it were, is when the sky is full of stars. So it's a different, it's 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 a different measure. Bahachim mashma biyushalmi. There's a Rishalmi that implies this. Shomer sham kam kemad tema aravit kevan shniru shosha shosha kochavim afa pisha chaman etuna beemtsa rakia laila hu. Okay, uh, so there it says, what would you say? Or as it's as you would say that at nighttime, as soon as you three see three stars, even though this the sun had the, the sun is in the middle of the rakia, it's night. Then it, the Gemara says, "V'yemar af b'shacharit kain." So why don't we make why don't we say that also in the morning? Klomar v'lama chashvin and yom me amud ashachar ayin sham. Why should we say that the day begins from amud ashachar? Why don't we say it also has to do with the number of stars that you see and where the position of the sun is? Ayin sham, but nonetheless, Alma de Laila Mikri be Echa Hamao Mere be Emtsa Harakia, Komar, 
Shalo Avra Daim Kol Oli Harakia. Nighttime comes when the sun is still, in, as it were, in the middle of the, uh, not the, uh, the horizon, in the middle of the end of, of your sight there at the, the west. That is, it hasn't gone entirely below the horizon. The Kenagu Ko Yisrael. This is the Minhag of all Yisrael. Motzei Shabbat, Noagin Kedivrei Rabbeinu Tam. So, for Knisat Shabbat, see, because what happens, according to Rabbeinu Tam, if you really hold like Rabbeinu Tam, it means that from the time of Shkia, you have 58 and a half minutes in which to start Shabbat. But according to the according to the sheet of the Gra and the Graz, you only have 13 and a half minutes, and that and that's that's already Safek Yom Safek Laila. And then it's Shabbat. Right? So this is so in the if you hold like Rabbeinu Tam Biknisat Shabbat, it's a big pula. If you hold like Rabbeinu Tam Biyitziyata Shabbat, it's a Khumra. And vice versa. So he says we hold like this first Shita to start Shabbat earlier. According to the Gra, or according to the Graz, that from Shkia you have, you have it's been a Shmashot already. You have thirteen and a half minutes, and that's Safek Yom Safek Laila. And after thirteen and a half minutes, it's Vadai Shabbat. But we are Machmir like Rabbein Atam Biyitziyata Shabbat to add on to not right to not finish Shabbat until the end of the seventy-two minutes from uh, from Shkia. Um, it's not very consequent. Not so, very what? Well. Not, not, it's not consistent. Cons yeah. It's no, it's not consistent. It's being machmir. It's a chumra the hen or the hen. That's what he says. The minhag is. So now he says, and maybe this is the last thing we'll do for today, he says, all of these shiurim that Chazal were measuring, In other words, these are all based on what the sightings that you would have in Israel or in Babylonia. And it's based on the summer and winter solstice, uh, the solstice, uh, the sun and Tishrei. In other words, it's based on the days, it's based on days that are completely equal, right? Days and night, where the day and night is equal. Mela, right, in our northern countries, in other words, he lived in Russia. The Yamota Choref, in the winter, Havilaila Techef Acharashkia. Night comes right after sundown. The Chen Bechoref, Yeshla has here at Ta'am, Shiagdimu Harbe, Baod Hashemesh Al Haaret. So we should warn everybody that they really should start Shabbat while they can still see the sun. Right in his time, they already were printing uh, uh, calendars with times, right? Candle lighting times and stuff like that. You should light at least 30 minutes before the time. In other words, the time in the Luach, according to what he's saying, is the Shkia. So he's saying you should light candles at least 30 minutes before Shkia. So he's saying that not to be medayek, that it has to be exactly 30 minutes before Shkia. What he's saying is it has to be before Shkia. So as a matter of as a practical matter, you should light 30 minutes before. The Chol HaZahir VaZariz B'Kedimat Shabbat Kodesh Makdimin No Brachot Min HaShemayim. Right? The more that you uh, start Shabbos early, God will be 
bring forth for you brachot from heaven. Um, I want to stop here then, and uh, maybe I, I, I'm not going to go through all of this next time, uh, but just for halachic purposes, you end up with a halachic, some of the halachot. First of all, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to trace the, the minhag of the, the 40 minutes before Shkia, where exactly, I know it's from the Gra, but I'm not sure exactly what it's based on. And um, uh, maybe we'll just summarize some of this, uh, the next part here without going too long. But I think this is a good place to stop. Anyway, I hope that was a little clearer. And not, uh, nowadays, they put the time of Adlakat Nehut on the Luach, not, not the. Right. So apparently the Luchot that he was talking about, they put Shkia, and now we have with Hadlakat Neirot, and now you don't even need a Luach, all you need is the internet. You can go on and you can see. But then we, then we see, it's also, I mean, it's interesting, right, because when you look on, uh, you know, Zman Hadlakat Neirot Yerushalayim is based on, at least for the Ashkenazi portals, it's based on the Minag of 40 minutes before. And everywhere else in the country, it's based on 18 minutes before. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to try to find... Oh, wait a second. We're not meeting next week. I'm taking vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it just, it just ben, worked. Ben <laughs> it's Ben Azmani. So even though I always give shir through Ben Azmani, but it just works out. I'm going for... Uh, I'm going uh, for Shabbos. I'm going to be in Baltimore. I rented a car. I'm going to go up to Massachusetts on Sunday for a wedding. And then I'm going to be in northern Massachusetts with uh, most of my kids, actually, are going to be gathering there because my daughter is married to a family that has a huge, huge house there. So we're all going to meet there for a few days. And um, I know the area really well. Yeah, do you know? Uh, I'm not. Uh, yeah, Northern. I know. Massachusetts. I do Northern Massachusetts in that area, pretty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this I, is I, a. I, it's a small place called. Excuse me. It's a small place called uh, Royalston. Which I do not know. No, but. Like you said, basically, it's like all the other parts of Northern Mass. You know, it's very bucolic. It's a nice, nice area. Uh, Tov. So I'll see you, God willing, in two weeks. Um, thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.